there are really only three things that you need to have in place to be able to start and create a really successful print-on-demand business. The three essential parts of a print-on-demand business that you need to figure out in order to get started are one, going to be the site that you're going to sell on, two, how you are going to design and create your products, and three, how you're going to do your research and find what types of products and niches to sell. So once you have all of that figured out, everything else in your print-on-demand business is going to fall in place. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you the exact steps you need to take and what you need to do to actually create this business, how you can get started on print-on-demand sites, which ones to get started on, what type of research suite you should be looking for, and how to do research and find products, as well as how to create designs that sell really well. If you are thinking about starting a print-on-demand business or have one but it's not getting any traction, this is the video for you. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know to get started as well as all of the resources you are going to need on this journey to help you build a print-on-demand business all the way from the ground up from scratch. Let's get started. Print-on-demand is one of the best side businesses you can start because of how passive it is. You are doing work up front, but then those items are going to continue to sell year after year. So what is print on demand? Print on demand is essentially you create the designs and listings for products. A lot of times these are going to be things like sweatshirts and t-shirts, totes, all of those things that you think of that could have different sayings and designs on them. So you are creating that initial product, the design, but unlike with traditional manufacturing, you are not creating the product, you're not shipping it, you're not printing it. None of that work is on you to do. You are just creating the listing and then the site or the manufacturing partner that you are associated with is going to do all of that work for you so that you can just be creating designs and new listings and then they are doing all that other work. So it makes it so you can really scale your income. If you were doing all of the manufacturing yourself for products, you would be limited to how many things you could actually create in one day. So if your store really blew up and you were getting 50 orders a day, you might not even be able to produce that many. However, on print on demand, you could create thousands and thousands of listings so even on one day, if you did get an order of 500 shirts, the manufacturing partner, they're going to take care of all of that for you. So you can just sit back and create more listings. That's why I think it's a really great business model that a lot of people should start if they haven't already. It takes relatively little time to get started and just a little bit of time to maintain every day or every week if you want this to be a big success. So it's a great option for if you are looking for a business to start. The first thing you're going to need to do as a new print on demand seller is figure out which platforms you are going to sell on. So this is my recommendation. If you really do want to take this print on demand thing seriously and you want to create a business more than just a hobby or a side thing that you're doing, you need to be prioritizing being on more than one site. So if I were starting again today, these are the exact sites that I'd either apply to right now or I would get started on. The first one is going to be Amazon Merch On Demand. Amazon is a huge e-commerce platform and because of that, they have so much traffic to drive to their site to be able to help you make sales. They are by far my biggest platform. I make the most revenue from them every single month and they still are a great place to be. However, with Amazon, they do have an application process and it tends to be very exclusive. So this is one of the hardest ones to get on. But if you can, it is a great place to sell. So my first thing that I would have you do is create an application for Amazon Merch because if you get on here, you will make sales. So I'm going to actually put my entire walkthrough of how to fill out your Amazon Merch application. That will really guide you through the process of everything you need to know. But besides Amazon Merch, there are two other places that if I was a new seller, I would definitely get started on as well. So the second one is going to be Etsy integrated with Printify to make it completely passive. So Etsy, you can sell pretty much anything. It is not just a print on demand platform, but by using a print manufacturer or a production partner like a place like Printify, you are able to just create the listings on Etsy and then sync it with a place like Printify. And then they are going to do all of the work for you. Everything from 
producing the orders, from printing the products, packaging them, shipping them. So you are just really creating those listings, getting them up on the site, and then they're doing the hard work for you. Unlike Amazon, there is no application process. So you actually, after this video, could just go ahead and start your account, sync it with Printify, and be up and selling items by the end of the day if you wanted to. Because it would get lengthy if I did explain everything right here and we have more things to get onto, I will link my complete walkthrough tutorial of getting yourself started on Etsy as a print on demand seller. You can make so much money here because you're really only limited by how many products you want to upload. On some of the other sites, you are limited to how many uploads you can do daily or just how many products you can have in general, but that is not the case on Etsy. So if you wanted to upload thousands of designs just this month, you could do that and make a lot of sales. Now, there are hundreds of other print on demand platforms, but if I was starting today and what I would tell you guys to do if you wanted to really start from scratch, the third site that I would prioritize getting on is going to be Redbubble. This is Editing Hannah here, and I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer. I usually film my videos about a week in advance. So this portion of the video, it was filmed before that whole Redbubble bombshell was dropped about their new tier system. I am planning to have a complete update video with more of my thoughts about that situation. But for right now, I just wanted to say that I do agree with a lot of the things that I shared here still. And I think it is a great option as well. But if you're looking for more info about what I think about that situation, just stay tuned for that. So Redbubble definitely has less traffic than Etsy and Amazon but they do have great name recognition. Lots of people are still looking for items on their site and they make it so simple to be a seller. There is no application process and you don't have to take care of anything like customer service or managing any of that. So really you're just creating the designs and then Redbubble is doing all of the hard work for you. Even though I don't make as much profit as on Amazon or Etsy, Redbubble still brings me daily sales and I am making consistent profit from them. So they're a great place to start and another great way to diversify the different sites that you're on. So while sometimes it seems like, well, why shouldn't I just prioritize one one site and do this really well, put all my attention into it, and then I'll make a lot more sales. And while sometimes that does work, I find that one of the best strategies for new print on demand sellers is diversifying where they are selling. Because in those first few months, a lot of times you are just making a few hundred dollars, which on one site, that's not a lot at all. But if you can make a few hundred dollars from several different places, that becomes a big chunk of change. And the other reason it's really great to be on more than one site is because there are different customers for every single different site. So you are creating this design, you're going to upload it on Amazon, but it turns out Amazon shoppers just aren't looking for that, but Etsy shoppers, they really are. So by creating one product and putting it multiple different places, not only are you multiplying the effort, you can design one product and have it have three times the effort. Sometimes a product you think is gonna do well here actually ends up selling a lot better on this site. So if you hadn't posted it there, you wouldn't even be getting sales from the item that you put a lot of work into. If I was starting over today and I was a new seller, I definitely would be prioritizing creating t-shirts. So t-shirts tend to be the thing that sells the most on print on demand, even though I have so many different types of products, still the biggest chunk of all of my sales every single month is going to be t-shirts because I spent so much time building that up. So that was what I would have you guys focus on too. In order to be a good print on demand, and seller, you're going to need to be able to design some t-shirts. So even if you were not an experienced designer, you've never used any kind of design software in your life, that doesn't matter. A lot of the really great print on demand sellers, they were never designers before they started doing this. They just have some great tools and resources to help them be able to make t-shirt and other product designs that look really, really good. So there are two places that I would definitely consider using for my design suite when I was just getting started. So the first one that you may already be familiar with, you may already even have is the site Canva. So Canva just makes designing pretty much anything you want very simple. They have basic tools, a lot of easy to use features. So it makes it really great for a beginner. This is actually where I got started when I was first a print on demand seller and I used them for a long time. Still have great success with so many of the designs that I created on Canva. I will link a design tutorial of me creating a t-shirt on Canva. It will show you how easy this is. But 
The other place that you definitely should consider using as your design software of choice is actually Kittle. So Kittle is a design suite that within the last year I've been using so much more. What I love about Kittle is that especially if you are a new designer or you just don't want to spend a lot of time creating designs is they have so many templates that you can use. So what you're going to do is you just can look for something that is going to look good with the design you're trying to create. You simply take that template and then you're just going to change the text, change some of the elements, and then you have a already ready to use design that looks super professional, but it didn't take you a lot of time. They, you also can create designs here from scratch. They have so many different tools, and I find that they just have a little bit more features than Canva does. So Canva does make things really simple, but at the same time, Kittle is very simple, and I just think they have a few extra tools that make it worthwhile. They even have introduced recently some more AI features and some really cool design things that just make designing super easy. Again, I'll link a tutorial of me using Kittle showing you everything that you need to know in case you do want to check that out. I'll also have all of these products linked down in the description too. Ultimately, as a new seller, you don't need anything really, really fancy. Well, I work with a couple different design suites. You can definitely get started with just one and you don't need to feel like you need to invest in all of these tools, a whole Adobe suite. And the nice thing about both Canva and Kittle is they already have a lot of assets that you can use. So they have different graphics and types of fonts. So you're not gonna have to, as a new seller, go out and buy all those things individually. It's all kind of encompassed in one package but I think it's a really great investment to use a paid design tool because it just makes your designs look so great and you can create a lot more of them. Now, the next piece of a print on demand business that you do need to know and figure out before getting started is how you are going to do your research. So I see so many people, they focus a lot of time on creating really great designs but they don't focus as much time into the research so they end up creating products for things that people either aren't interested in or there is just way too much competition for them actually to make sales. So I think the best thing you can do to stand out as a new seller is really take a lot of time investing in researching really great niches and products. So there are a few ways that you can do this. There are a number of free methods to do niche research and find what products will actually sell. One of them being just, I come out with tons of niche videos every single month, as well as I actually have a newsletter of the hottest or trending niches for that week into your inbox. So make sure you subscribe to that down below. That is a great free method to find niches, or you can keep up to date with things like Google Trends, what is trending on Amazon and Redbubble. There are many different ways to find free niches. I actually have a video about all of the ways that you can find free niches. So watch that if you're looking for those. But a lot of times, if you are trying to do all of this research for free, you are going to spend a lot of time and sometimes still only come up with niches that have a lot of competition. So what I would really recommend if you're a new seller is investing in one research tool. This is what I did when I first got started as a print on demand seller. And I really think it's how I was able to get a lot of traction early on. So if you get some kind of research tool, you are going to be able to get a really great idea of what types of products sell, what ones are trending right now, which ones have a lot of competition, which ones have high demand, but low competition. All of those things would take you hours and hours if you were just trying to do it all of yourself by scrolling different pages of Amazon or Etsy. But a research tool is going to lay out all this information for you and they are gonna have the data make sense. They are gonna help you be able to discover what products are going to be good to sell. So the first niche research tool that I think is a really great one for print on demand sellers to have is Merch Informer. So Merch Informer is more geared towards sellers that are going to sell on Amazon Merch. However, this is the tool that I come back to time and time again just to find trending niches and designs. So they have a lot of different capabilities, but I'll just highlight some of the ones that I use frequently. So they have something called a trend tracker where you can see what products have been steadily selling over a period of months. So you can say one to two months or zero to three months. And then you can look through those, find great ideas for products and use that as inspiration. They also have another area where you can look at the movers and shakers. 
things that have all of a sudden just really taken off in sales this week or today. So you could see that, oh, wow, this thing must be really trending because all of a sudden all of these types of shirts are selling well. So I want to jump on that trend and make some designs in that too. Whereas you might have not noticed this if you were just trying to monitor all of these things by yourself. And then another feature that I really love for them is they have something called a competition checker. So sometimes as a seller, I will just think of different niches. So maybe I wanted to create a design and I'm like, hey, I would like to create a design for foster moms, but I don't know, maybe that niche is too competitive. So what I would do is I'd plug it into this competition checker and then it's gonna give me a rating from either A to F about if I should pursue this. So an A rating means that there is high demand, but a lot less competition. And then if it had a F rating, that means that it either has way too high of competition for you to stand out, or there's just no demand for this item. So it's a great thing to do because you're not gonna be wasting time creating designs that definitely aren't gonna get seen. And then the next research tool that is really great, especially if you are going to prioritize selling on Etsy or want to do really well on your Etsy store, is going to be Sale Samurai. Where at Merge Informer, it really just prioritizes t-shirt trending designs. Sale Samurai is more of an all-encompassing SEO tool for Etsy sellers. So you can get really good ideas of new products to sell. They are gonna have tons of information about what are trending t-shirts to sell, but along with that, you can research other products. So if you wanted to create a personalized candle for teachers, you could look that up and it's gonna tell you whether that's a great niche to pursue and if it is, they're gonna help you figure out what keywords you should be putting in your listing, what tags you should use, how to optimize your listing, what other people are selling similar products for. So it really is an all-in-one tool that if you're an Etsy seller, you definitely should have this. This video is not sponsored by them, but I do have discount codes for both Merch Informer and Sam Sale Samurai. I will link both of those down below in the description if you do want to check them out. Some other things you will have to learn along the way as you're getting started, but if you do have those three things in place, you are on your way to creating a really successful print on demand business and you have all the foundation set. So the next thing you probably should figure out how to do is write good titles and descriptions and create a good design. So I'm going to link a couple videos here on how you can do both of those things. And I will have all of the resources that I mentioned in this video linked down below in the description, as well as the videos that have tutorials to all of the different sites and tools that I mentioned here. So make sure you give those a watch so you can get started on your print on demand business. I wish you guys the best of luck and I'm really excited for so many of you to become print on demand sellers in 2023. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.